trick, eh? Here's a good story. <coughs> there was once a woodcutter whose wife had died and who had an only son. The woodcutter was very, very poor. But he was determined that the boy should have a better life than his. And so for years and years he saved every penny he had so that he could send the boy to school. Will you stop picking yourself? Dear, oh dear. <laughs> In those days, of course, school was a luxury. And to send the boy there cost him every penny he had. What does it matter if I don't eat? The old woodcutter said. I mean, why should I mind if I haven't been able to afford a new pair of socks for seven years? I shall send my boy to school. He will learn an honest trade. And one day, he will be able to support me. Hmm. Well, yeah, but unfortunately, the money he had saved wasn't quite enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The money the old woodcutter saved wasn't quite enough. And in fact, two days later, just when the boy had learned which way round his cap went, the money ran out, and the headmaster promptly sent the boy home. Well, Dad, he said, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> looks like I better become a woodcutter. Oh, but the father grumbled and groaned. Oh, no, 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 oh, no, no, that's no good. He complained, oh, no, no, you're not used to it. No, it's a hard life, and I ought to know. I mean, just look at the blisters on these fingers. <gasps> oh, dear, oh, dear, heaven knows what'll happen to us now. Oh, I suppose we'll just have to starve or something like that. Oh, dear, and oh, Dad, please shut up, the boy replied. Look, I don't mind hard work. I'll soon get used to it. <laughs> yeah, maybe you will, the father said, maybe you will. But where am I going to get an axe? Huh? Yeah, you hadn't thought of that, had you? Oh, no. I have got one axe, and that is mine. No, no. <laughs> How can you be a woodcutter when you've got nothing to cut wood with, eh? Well, the son wasn't worried. <laughs> he simply walked over to the neighbour's house and borrowed an axe from him. And, and that, that was how he became a woodcutter. What's going on? Well, one day, just as the sun was at its very hottest, the father grew tired and suggested they both had a rest. Come and sit down with me, he said. Maybe we'd better have something to eat, you know. If we had a little rest and a little something to nibble, we'll work much better later on this afternoon. You know, I mean, I should know, really, because I have been doing this all my life, you know. I mean, just look at the blisters on my fingers. I no, father, father, sh shut up a minute. You rest. I'm going for a walk. A walk? The father wailed. A walk, he says. Are you completely bonkers? You'll tire yourself out. You'll be no good for anything. I think you'd better listen to me just but for a But the sun moment. went off for a walk anyway. It was a lovely day. And he was enjoying the fresh air with the sun beating down on his... Ow, ow, ow. With the sun beating down on his face. And although he probably wouldn't have admitted it, even to himself, he was rather happy being away from his ever-complaining father. Anyway... He hadn't go Ugh. Anyway, he hadn't gone very far when he came upon an old, gnarled oak tree. It must have been at least a hundred years old, for it was leaning dangerously to one side, as if about to fall on top of the next person to stop for a picnic. <laughs> well, the boy didn't stop, but as he passed the tree, he heard a thin voice squealing somewhere inside the trunk. Let me out! Ugh. Let me out! Puzzled, he went over to the tree and looked up at the branches. But there was nothing in sight. <laughs> Boy frowned. Perhaps the sun had gone to his head after all and he was imagining things. <gasps> but a second later, there it was again. Let me out! Let me out! It was coming from down in the ground, not up in the air. Kneeling down, the boy scooped out some of the earth under the tree, digging about in its roots, and it was there, about two feet underground, that he found a small glass bottle. And inside the bottle, a spirit. Let me out! cried the creature for a third time. Will you let me out? Well, the boy couldn't think of any reason why he shouldn't let it out. So he pulled out the cork and out sprang the spirit. And at once it doubled in size. Then again, and again. In fact... <laughs> Thank you! It bellowed in a deep, rough voice. And now, I shall strangle you! Uh, why? asked the boy. Because that's the sort of creature I am, the spirit said. My name is Mercurius. Uh, Mr. Mercurius to you. Hey, 
Do you know why I was put in the bottle? I, I, I can't imagine, the boy said. For strangling people, and that's what I'm going to do to you. Oh, the boy swallowed hard. Oh, no, 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 not so fast, he exclaimed. Uh, hey, uh, I'm not so sure you were in the bottle to start with. What? Of course I was, the spirit cried. Well, well, well then, prove it, said the boy. <laughs> I bet you can't get back inside here again. Why, that's easy! <laughs> yeah! Laughed Mercurius in a loud, stupid voice and slipped back into the bottle again, at which the boy promptly stuffed the cork back in and captured it once again. Phew! <sighs> When he saw how he'd been tricked, the spirit burst into tears. <laughs> oh, please let me out, it cried. I'll make you rich. No, I'll make you happy. I'll do anything. Yeah, I know exactly what you'll do, the boy replied. You'll try and strangle me again. No, I shan't, I shan't, the creature insisted. Look, I promise, let me out and I'll make you very, very, very rich. Well, the boy thought about it. He outsmarted Mr. Mercurius once. He could do it again. And certainly, the creature sounded sincere enough. So he nodded, and he opened the bottle. And once again, the spirit doubled and tripled in size. But this time, there was no more talk of strangling. I will keep my word, it said. Take this piece of rag. If you spread it over a wound, the wound will heal. And if you rub it against steel or iron, the metal will change into silver. Goodbye! And with that, Mercurius strode off through the forest, knocking a few trees out of his way as he went. And as soon as he was gone, the boy decided to try out this magical piece of rag. He carried the neighbor's axe with him, so he started by rubbing the rag against that. And sure enough, the axe turned at once into the very purest silver. Brilliant! Well, he was very pleased with himself, as you can imagine. But when he got back, his father was less than pleased to see him. Oh, Clarky, where have you been? He moaned. Forgotten his work to do, have you? I always said it'd be too hard for you. Oh, dear, oh, dear. All right, then, let's have your axe. I suppose I'd better cut down another tree while you sit around the place doing nothing. And he took the son's axe and whacked it into another tree. The silver axe bent in half. Oh, no! Now look what you've done! That axe was worth five marks, the father whined. Oh, I'll have to pay for the damage, of course. It's our neighbour's axe unless you've forgotten. Father, the boy began, I can pay for a new axe. You see, don't tell me what you can and what you can't pay for. Honestly, students, look, why don't you try and make yourself useful just for once? Take the bindi axe down to the market and see what you can get for it. I'll go down to our neighbour and try to explain. I don't know. Oh, look at these blisters. Well, the son did as he was told. He took the axe to the market, but not to the ironmonger stall or the scrap stall, as his father had suggested, but to the local goldsmith. Well, the goldsmith immediately recognised the axe for what it was. Oh, that is pure silver, he said, and it's a very fine quality, too. I would say that's worth the... <laughs> well, uh, I'll give you 500 marks for it. Well, the boy was overjoyed and ran home to his father with all the money. Oh, well, oh, here comes trouble again. <sighs> all right, then, how much did you get for the axe? He demanded. Nothing, was it nothing? Less than nothing? What did you get? Half a peanut. I got 500 marks, father, the son said, and gave his father a great handful of coins. You, it, it, you got... It, five... It, uh, 500? You? How? The father could hardly speak. <laughs> so the son told him everything that had happened with the spirit in the bottle and how, by simply being quick-witted and hopeful, he had managed to make himself a fortune. Well, the father didn't believe it at first, but when the son showed him the magic rag, he was forced to change his mind, especially once he had cured his blisters. That's fantastic! Hey, we can forget this woodcutting lark for a start. <laughs> This is all our problems solved. And sure enough, it was. The son had enough money to go back to school and finish his studies. And he did very well, too. In fact, he got a GCSE in Latin, jousting, haymaking, witch burning, applied haymaking, and he came top in history. Mind you, history was a lot easier to learn in those days as there was less of it. And, uh, well, that was the end of that. And what, you may ask, became of Mercurius. Well, nobody knows. After he was released from the bottle, the spirit simply disappeared. And if you ask me, that's just as well. Well, after all, he was pretty repulsive. 
Not only very ugly, but also completely stupid, if you ask me. <laughs> I mean, who's ever heard of a spirit who... <laughs>